Thank you, Bracca, for joining me on the podcast today. Would you like to introduce yourself for the audience? Okay, sure. Um, I'm the author of 38 spiritual children's books and one memoir um, about how I overcame food addictions, basically. And um, let's see. I studied at Harvard, and then I was studying in medical school to, to become a psychiatrist. And I guess that's that's as much as I'll say right now. Okay. <laughs> Thirty-eight children's books, and then one book around relationship with food. Wow, that is that is amazing. So I'd love to hear more. You mentioned you studied at Harvard and some time at medical school. Can you talk me through and for the audience a little bit about your background, how you got into the writing as you are today yeah well okay over the spiritual part these children's books it's kind of unusual because most picture books for children are not spiritual books i write about really deep stuff in a simple way so that so that children can understand deep spiritual concepts that's what i love to do so the same thing with the book for adults the memoir that i wrote I, I don't like to write long things, so it kind of wrote itself. It's a memoir. It's composed of like my diaries, my journal entries, letters that I wrote. It's the process of how I developed food addictions and how I overcame them. And the book was it's kind of like a case study because you go through it with me. You know, you see it developing and then you see me healing. And Truthfully, the book was like a therapeutic experience because it was at the end of the book, putting it together, compiling it, is how I came to understand why when I was able to get the spiritual nourishment that I was craving, I no longer had a need for the food addictions. So that's really what the path of the book is about. And that's what I'm enjoying sharing now with people. It's, it's to me a really important ingredient that is sometimes left out of overcoming food addictions, the, the spiritual aspect. That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. I would love to learn more about that. Do you mind sharing, um, I guess, briefly talk us through the book, what the journey looks like and, and share as much details you like? Okay, what I learned, what changed my life, I was searching for what is the purpose to life. I couldn't believe, like there was something missing from my life. I couldn't believe that the purpose of life was to get up every day, to, to eat food, to go to work, to make money, to eat food, to go to work, to make money. Like, what is this all for? You know, what's the purpose of all this? When I, when I, I got to Israel in the summer before my first and second year of medical, before my second year of medical school, I had a six week break. I met this rabbi who's no longer alive. It changed my life. What I was searching in all kinds of religions and everything, but my own heritage, I didn't, I didn't even know there was anything spiritual there. So it was like a big discovery for me to find this. Is that he, he spoke about that the purpose of life is to experience the greatest pleasure possible. And I was like, I never heard anything like that. The purpose of life is to experience the greatest pleasure possible. What does that mean? And he talked about the pleasure ladder. There's five levels to the pleasure ladder. On the first level are all the physical pleasures that we enjoy. And food is one of them. That's why people can so easily get stuck on food. It's the most, it's one of the most basic pleasures. Like it could have been that we just take a pill every day, a tasteless pill, but, but food was designed to be, to be beautiful. Like when we pick it from the tree, it becomes bright, ripe and bright, bright colors, bright orange, like this bright orange. Um, and, and it, it tastes delicious. It has a beautiful aroma and, and it looks beautiful. So everything, it, it just opened my mind up to realize that this world was created for our pleasure so that food is meant to be pleasurable. And if we don't have enough other pleasures in our life, we could get stuck on food because it immediately gives us pleasure. And why do we overeat? Because we want the pleasure to keep lasting. That makes so much sense. So how do we get over that? We bring in other pleasures. We bring in 
on the same level of physical pleasures, we could bring in music. Let's say we're overeating. We could turn on music. We could start dancing, stretching, and we suddenly would have another pleasure in our life. We wouldn't be as drawn to, oh, so we don't overeat like the natural healthy stuff, really. We, we overeat the stuff that isn't as natural. It doesn't have the same vitality of connection to source like a, an orange or an apple would have. You know, we, we eat the stuff that's more, we, we tend to overeat the stuff that's more processed and it doesn't have the vitality of source so much in it. So we, we, we let, let's say turn on music or we go out into nature we, or we move, we, we dance, we do yoga, we stretch. And when we do those things, we don't feel like the bag of potato chips is calling our name as loudly anymore because, because we are getting a more lasting joy or another type of joy, even on the same level of pleasure. Um, I could quickly tell you the other levels. The second level is love, which according to the definition, it's, an, it's, a, it's, an, it's a unique definition. It involves focusing on the virtues of another. So it's not dependent on getting love from anybody. It's about focusing on the virtues of someone else. So we could bring that kind of love into our life at any moment. And, and each level is each level of pleasure, the way we experience pleasure is through gratitude. So when we feel grateful for this orange, it's like a kind of mindfulness and we don't feel like overeating as much because it's, it's filling our hungry soul. And so love, focusing on another, that's gratitude. In, in, in each level, we build more connection into our life because when we overeat, we're feeling alienation, disconnection, loneliness, stress, these are all disconnecting ways of feeling. So we bring, as we bring more connection into our life by adding more pleasure, the need to overeat or to have any addiction, it just decreases because we've filled our hungry soul. So after love, the next level up is meaning. It's, it's doing something meaningful. And again, when we're doing something meaningful, we don't feel like overeating. It's just we're involved in something greater and bringing more pleasure. Up, up the ladder, the fourth level is creativity. As you know, when you're doing something creative, you don't feel like, um, you don't think about eating or even sleeping when you're in that zone of creativity. It's like such a pleasure. And then the highest level is transcendence. When we when we just recognize the connection between everything and everybody, it's like complete connection. And, and we, we don't spend a lot of time at that highest level. We get glimpses of it in life, like under a starry sky, we all know what that feels like. We keep that pleasure within us. It's something we can return to, that sense of being a part of the awesome universe. So, so those are basically the five levels of pleasure in a nutshell. And, and, and when we recognize that there's an abundance of pleasure in the world, if we keep that in our mind, then we don't feel that sense of scarcity that we need to keep overeating. That's the only pleasure we could get, right? You know, we, we realize that we could bring other pleasures into our life. That's amazing. That, I think that really resonates in terms of we often find ourselves overeating when we just don't get the satisfaction, the the pleasure as you say from other things whether it's well if you think about most of the common should we say emotional eating um scenarios it's stressed at work or arguing with a close friend or family member or, or spouse or something and that leads one to go and dive into the chip cupboard and have all the candy and chocolate and all that sort of stuff so yeah that that resonates really powerfully Really yes, we, we got used to doing that. We got used to giving us that easy pleasure. But there's so many other pleasures. If we recognize that, then that's how we can begin to get unstuck. And I like what you're doing. From what I understand, with the DNA, um, the fat loss, your, your DNA fat loss coach, you're, you're, you're going into what is each individual unique person need because it's not the same for each person. Like each person has different things that fill them in a different way. And 
and that includes all kinds of joy. What works for you? What, what, makes, what makes the bag of chocolate chip cookies stop calling your name? For each person, it's something different. But as you're doing it on an individual basis, coaching people, I think that's so valuable because it's not a broad stroke for everybody. It, 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 is, it is a broad stroke that we all need to bring more joy into our lives. But what that joy is for each individual is unique. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate, uh, appreciate what you said then. Um, what would you say was the most powerful change that helped you overcome your addictions? Yes, that is it. When, when I feel like overeating, I ask myself this question, is it my body that's hungry or my soul? And that question I think it makes the neurons that are firing at the top of my brainstem that are saying, you must keep eating. You're, not, you're still hungry. You don't have enough. You got to keep eating. It, it, it makes them go up to my prefrontal cortex to say, is this maybe my soul that's hungry? You know, and then I, you don't feel that, um, that impulsiveness to keep eating. You're in a calmer, st a calmer state suddenly because you can think about yourself as a spiritual being that needs joy to thrive in life. As much as it needs physical pleasures, we need spiritual pleasures. Yeah. Amazing. So what would you say were your key, I guess, sources of, of I don't want to say distraction, because it's not really a distraction because that's a kind of negative phrase, but what was fulfilling you when you moved away from filling the gap with food? Oh, like, well, for instance, oh gosh, everything. I mean, just learning about the wisdom of life, that's a spiritual pleasure. I love to do that. Um, being in nature, definitely. Movement, because our bodies are designed to move. I love to dance, I love to do yoga, I love to stretch. And I love to do these things to music. These all bring me pleasure. And also reaching out to other people. I mean, that helping other people, whenever we're doing that. I, I, was, I was doing a podcast the other day and I was describing this. And the, and the guy said to me, you know, I was just plowing through a box of pizza. I was just eating one slice after another and a neighbor knocked on my door and he needed help with something. I went out to help him. When I came back, I didn't feel like eating the pizza anymore. I felt so good about helping him. You know, like I realized, and that's it. He made that connection. He got the nourishment for his soul. And he was no longer feeling that sense of aloneness. And he didn't need to finish the box of pizza anymore, you know, because that's how it works. When we bring these other levels of pleasure into our life, when we make it... Um, habitual actually and at first it feels a little strange but after a while it becomes a habit and that struggle is no longer even there because you're used to as you say you're looking for a way to sustain this new way of living that's that's what it does yes i think that's a brilliant story about eating the pizza and then trying <laughs> to help someone that's, that's so cool um that definitely definitely resonates like when i'm chatting with friends or on the phone to I don't know, mum and dad, brother. Um, I'm not thinking about eating. I'm focused, I'm very, I guess the word would be present and focused on what is happening in that moment. And I guess for many who, well, for many who struggle to lose weight, it's often they're so revolved around food because they're not present in other areas of their life that should bring them pleasure or, or could bring them pleasure. Exactly. And I think you're you, I, also I read about that you're working with many executives. You know, people are so busy that, like you say, they don't take the time to be present or to feel gratitude, to savor life. That is so important. Gratitude is the way that we can reach pleasure. So whether it's, you know, just enjoying an orange, whether it's enjoying the music, enjoying the cool, fresh air, whatever it is that fills us with pleasure, if we pause to do that, we just don't feel like overeating then at all because we're, 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 that's filling our souls. Yes. Love it. And that resonates for me in terms of the way 
how we eat, how we eat our food. So, so many of us, you know, especially for rushing between meetings, let's say pre COVID, we're in the car picking up a drive through and stuffing our face on the way to another meeting or to meet a client or something. Um, or these days, I guess, in the COVID era, we are all here behind our Zoom calls, <laughs> eating at our desks, maybe. Um, <laughs> but just taking 10, 15 minutes to really sit down with limited distraction and again, be present and really focus on enjoying the food, eating the food, that in itself can prevent overeating. And because it just gives you that level of satisfaction, which you don't get when you're so distracted by the screens, the, and the other conversations, the stress that's going on. Exactly. And, and all these things, like, I don't consider that we're distracting ourselves when, we, when we're involved with eating and then we turn on music. It's not distracting. We're, we, we are bringing another pleasure into our lives. Many times, if we're enjoying a meal, we just want to keep going. So we have to think, what, should, what could I do afterwards that would bring me pleasure? And that gets you like to transition out of it to move on to the next pleasure, too. Exactly. Yes. That's a really good point. Uh, um, I guess plan something you enjoy after the meal. I did hopefully, <laughs> ideally something that is positive and uh, beneficial, you know, healthy wise. Exactly. Health-wise. Yeah, something that pulls you away from just sitting there and eating the crisps until they're all gone. Exactly, because we're not physically hungry when we're overeating. It's something else that's hungry. It is not our bodies that are hungry anymore. If we've eaten a good meal, we don't need super amount of food to survive. You know, we need like a basic good meal and then let's move on to another pleasure. That's, that's what we have to recognize. Right. I love it. The, the music idea, when I think of music in combination with food, it's normally my brain normally goes to things like eating in a restaurant when you're surrounded by your friends and your family and there's music going on in the background. That's a really social, you know, you don't, it's not all about the food. It's about the experience and the social aspect and, and the music and stuff. Whereas if we're just sat by ourselves, you know, quietly in front of the computer, that's when there isn't that sort of um, overall enhancement and satisfaction factor. So I think that, that's really interesting. And I guess if you're, you know, you're having a Spanish night, for example, it can be a bit of fun to just put on some kind of Spanish flamenco music whilst you're eating that or whilst you're cooking that. And again, that brings a bit more joy and makes it not so much all about the food just that you're going to overeat. So, yeah. Exactly. And when we're with a person in a restaurant, if, if we see that we're tending to overeat, we can focus on the other person more, make the connection more important than the food. You know, there's ways to do it at any time we can switch the focus of our pleasure so that we don't need to keep stuffing our faces with the food and we can enjoy something else, a different pleasure in life. Exactly. Love it. Great. Um, and the helping other people one really, really stood out for me that you mentioned earlier, especially right now when we are also isolated. I think that's something that has i don't want to say exactly it's fallen to the wayside but it can very easily without conscious effort can fall to the wayside in covid because we just don't have that level of contact with with people it's, where we have the opportunity to help people so it's true but we can help people online so much it, there's so many ways to do it virtually even texting somebody an uplifting message there's small ways and that right away fills us with joy when we reach out to someone lonely we don't even have to have physical contact, but even doing it virtually, we can spread joy. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really great to, you know, discuss these. Really, when it boils down to it, this is fat loss techniques, really. The outcome of doing these things will eventually result in fat loss because you prevent overeating, you prevent, you improve your relationship with food. And it's, it's so funny, most people obviously look to, oh, what foods do I need to eat? What foods do I need to avoid? And really the whole context of how you're eating and what else are you doing in your life that you get pleasure from, you know, that whole bigger picture context 
plays such an important part, but it's so undervalued. It's uh, Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I learned that it takes like 400 repetitions to create new synapses in our brain to overcome a bad habit. But if we do, the, if we make the change joyfully, like 10 repetitions, we can make the change happen. So if we add joy, it's so much easier to make changes. And it, it doesn't, it's, it's a pleasure. So it, it, it takes a lot of that struggle away. Um, we don't need to think about what are we restricting from our life. We're adding joy. I, I, I yeah, I, that's what it's about. <laughs> yes. Love it. I, most people, right, generally speaking, always approach fat loss with a this mentality of what do I need to take away? What do I need to remove? What shall I avoid? But my approach, and it, primarily nutritionally, is always saying, okay, can we add in more? Um, beneficial foods more protein more vegetables you know yes. health fats and so on because that's going to support that's going to support reduction of those highly processed foods but it, we can take it a step further and say the best thing to add into your diet to lose to lose weight is actually more pleasurable experiences more helping others more yeah, music go and dance around your living room and put on your favorite tune like Exactly. All these things you're saying. Plus, um, people have gotten so used to junk food that they don't appreciate the natural foods. You know, once, let's say a person just eats the natural foods first, like a big salad and stuff, they, they just won't have that much more room for the junk afterwards, you know, and they'll be, they'll be full from the natural stuff, which has so much more vitality to it. And after a while, a person feels the effects of eating more healthfully. You, you feel you have more energy and you feel more joyful. That's what happens. Yes. Absolutely. Definitely agree there. Uh, something you mentioned earlier on that I thought was really, really powerful. You said our bodies are designed to move, which, you know, I, I was talk I talk about this on most podcasts. I think it comes up. Um, evolutionary wise, we're not designed. We're just not designed to sit at a desk all day and not move. Like we are, fundamentally hunter gatherers still um we have been for years and years so many years and years um we're just designed to move we're designed to be on our feet and to be picking stuff up and putting stuff down and eating whole real food that's come from the ground that's come from the earth exactly yeah exactly and movement should be joyful i think it's really nice the way you combine that with say you know yoga stretching dancing these are things that feel good they're things that well, they make you feel good, but they feel good almost in the moment because it's kind of how your body is designed or meant to be. We're really going back to our sort of evolutionary roots in a way. Yes, we are designed to move. Exactly. <laughs> and it's, it's such a joy once we do it. You know, when we're sitting for a while, it feels so great to stand up and stretch, put on music, dance. Ah. Oh, Anyone who's not used to doing it, give it a try. You'll just see so much joy in your life. It's what happens. Yes. Love it. Absolutely. There's uh, definitely some key takeaways so far for people listening. Add in joyful stuff. Get up and move. Do stuff that makes you feel good. Um, is there a common myth that you would like to dispel around, say, um, food obsession and food eating and stuff? Yeah, the myth I want to dispel is that we're just physical beings. We are spiritual beings too, and we forget that because that part is invisible. <laughs> but, um, you know, according to the first law of th thermodynamics, no energy is ever lost or destroyed. That spirit within us, it doesn't just go away. Like when we all die, you think it just vanishes? It just disappears. No, there's a spiritual part of us and it lives on. That's, and that's actually, it's science. That's the first law of thermodynamics. So like one of the books I, write for, I wrote for children is the invisible book. It's about how we believe in, we believe in gravity. You let go of something, it just falls to the ground. We believe in time. We believe in feelings and thoughts. These are all invisible things and we believe in them. So why is it hard to believe that we're, we're souls, we're spiritual beings 
housed in bodies. And we have to take care of our bodies because they are housing our souls. So we take care of them by doing all these healthy things for them. And that gives us more of a chance to be on earth, doing good deeds and nourishing our souls. So that's my point. That's the myth that we're just physical beings. We're also spiritual beings and we have to nourish both our bodies and our souls every day throughout the day. Yeah. And I guess when you say nourish your soul, a lot of that comes down to being joyful, do the things that you, that you enjoy and, and bring you pleasure and um, yeah, really help to sort of sustain that. Exactly. All the things on the pleasure ladder nourish the soul. All these natural physical pleasures nourish the soul. In fact, that was the purpose of food. Food was designed to sustain our bodies in order to uplift our soul. When we eat these natural foods, it uplifts our soul. We feel great pleasure. And when we appreciate someone else, that uplifts our soul. When we do something meaningful, see all of these things nourish our soul. When we're creative, it nourishes our soul. Every, every one of these things does that. So, so savor the pleasure that you're experiencing throughout the day and you will see that you will have more vitality, more energy, and, 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 and it fills us with gratitude as we recognize each of these pleasures in the world, that, that really life is meant to be a pleasure. We've gotten so far away from that. Just that, just that thought changes the whole perspective. Yes. Amazing. There was a study I saw somewhere, I can't remember the exact statistics of it, but it basically said that some of the best things you can do to improve your longevity, so it was obviously like, regular exercise, eating high quality foods and stuff. But one of the most um, powerful methods was the number of like strong relationships and connections you have with people around you and the sort of frequency that you are, um, I guess, in conversation or reaching out or maybe having interaction with those people. And that just, you know, rings so true from the conversation that we're having and taking it a step further can really lead to additional sustainable fat loss because you're not you're not focused on finding all of your pleasure from food you're you're experiencing pleasure from all these different sources that that manage your your food intake because you just don't need to rely on it from an entirely food perspective so. exactly and you working as an executive coach executives can burn out if they don't experience enough pleasure in their lives. It'll never feel like work if you're enjoying yourself every day. If you um, are savoring the relationships, like you say, and savoring um, doing meaningful things for the world, whatever product you're working on, how does it help the world be a better place? The, the more you experience that in your life, it, it'll never feel like work and you won't be um, drained and burned out from working, you'll have more energy to, to be an executive. I think that's, that's the way to go. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Definitely. So I think this brings me nicely onto my, uh, my other question. So if you could get the entire world population to do one thing every day, what would it be and why? Yes, I, I, I think I'm just going to repeat myself kind of, but it's really what we've said. Recognize, recognize, everybody needs to recognize that they're spiritual beings. That's why we're here. These five levels of the pleasure ladder, they actually correspond to the five levels of the human soul. Every human being has these five levels of their soul that, we need, that needs nourishment every day. So if we recognize that we're spiritual beings, we will all be more connected to each other, appreciate each other more, have more gratitude for life, and the world will be a much better place. Yeah. Yeah, this, that sort of idea, you know, be more joyful, do more things that bring you joy. Um, tie in has come up several times when I've asked that question and we always we normally end up discussing like the impact that would have on society in the world if everyone was just a little bit more happier more joyful probably 
relaxed, less stress, less, well, less bad decision making. There's so many benefits and so, such great impact that that would have. Exactly. And gratitude is the key. A person even in prison can experience gratitude. And addictions are like a prison. Within a prison, whatever a person is imprisoned by, they can still have gratitude for something. Whatever small thing it is, that gratitude will help them reach toward freedom. It, it helps you to make your world bigger and bigger, the more gratitude you have in your life. So it's not like, it's not like I need more pleasures. No. You need to experience more gratitude for the pleasures you already have in life. Focus on what you have, and, um, and that's the way to become. Uh, we have an expression in, in the Talmud, who is rich? Those people who are happy with what they have. That's really it. So, so, be, so fill your life with gratitude. Yes. Very nice message. So, Brecker. Who are three people who have been most influential to you? Yes, I think it was definitely the rabbi that I met in Israel that summer. He's no longer alive, Rabbi Noah Weinberg. Um, my parents, who were just always encouraging me to just be whoever I wanted to be. It was a very limitless view that they had. And, and, and my husband. My husband always encourages me to just soar let my spirit soar and be as creative as i want to be so i'm very grateful yeah love it yeah awesome i think the again this comes up very often but the people around you and the impact that has on you um i i'm very i was very lucky that my parents were very supportive of, of what i wanted to do and always kind of helping me out and enabling me i should say <laughs> <laughs> enabling me to go and follow you know pursue my dreams and stuff like that um but unfortunately that's not always the case and some people are i guess constrained would be maybe the right word i'm so glad you brought that up because it's not enough for some people to only nourish their souls like my the, my, the name of my memoir is searching for god in the garbage a lot of times people have a ton of garbage piled on top of their souls. Their souls are still shining, but they can't feel it because of all the garbage that's occluding them from shining. So in addition, everybody needs to nourish their soul, but some people also need therapeutic intervention to get rid of all the garbage that's been piled on top of their pure souls so that they can feel the nourishment and let them shine. If a person, if a child was neglected or abused, if, you're, if, a, if a child grows up with that, then, then un, they have a lot of garbage piled on top of their sweet, pure souls, which are still shining. In order, to, they, in order for them to shine in the world and feel that shine, they may need therapeutic intervention. It's absolutely necessary. You need to do both. Nourish the soul and also get rid of the garbage because... Um, that's needed if a person especially went through trauma in childhood yes Very interesting. That, and many people have addictions for those reasons because of all the garbage that's piled on top and they they're not feeling the nourishment in their soul they may need both in order to overcome addictions yes that's a really good point the impact of things that happen earlier in our life and uh, trauma especially that's definitely but well, from, from academic reading that I've done, that's definitely can lead to addictions and be a primary cause of those yes. later on in life. Yeah. Okay. What are you curious about right now? Oh, I'm curious, you know, I mean, this pandemic has been so huge, affecting everybody just about or around the world. And I'm curious how we will be different after this. You know, um, it... It got us to focus on, in a sense, it was an opportunity to have more gratitude because all the things we took for granted, suddenly we couldn't take them for granted anymore. They were suddenly gone. And like we had to, you know, refocus and suddenly be grateful for things that we just expected. And now we have an opportunity to have more gratitude. I hope, I'm curious if this will lead to a spiritual jump 
in the world. Um, and people will be able to focus on the simpler things in life and develop more gratitude um, because they are no longer taking as much for granted as before the pandemic. Very, very interesting. Great point. Yeah, that's something I'm very curious to see how that pans out and plays out <laughs> as well. Um, this, I mean, we are in unprecedented times. This just hasn't happened in within our lifetime. So it's going to be fascinating to see how this plays out and as things start to probably very slowly <laughs> return to normal over the next. Right. Year. How will we be changed from this? Exactly. All of us. Yeah. Yeah. And what impact will that have? in 10, 15 years time, does that change the, our trajectory as humans? Does that, yeah, it's going to be, that's going to be very interesting. Great point. Great point. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask, are there maybe three quick tips that you have for the listeners, three things that they could do today or this week that would help them to experience more joy, um, which could potentially lead to them, you know, overcoming food addictions or, overcoming sort of emotional eating and improving their health what tips would you give yes okay the next time it's kind of a review but the next time you open the fridge and you feel like um overeating when you've already well you say oh i haven't had enough but you know let's say you've you've had a basic meal um see what else you could do to bring pleasure into your life instead and then you could say you know if i'm still hungry an hour later i could go back and see what i need to eat but let's see what else i could do right now to bring pleasure into my life um and then you can try try some type of exercise that you enjoy what type of movement would you really like to do and if no one's watching turn on music and dance just give it a try try something you've never done before like you said be curious be curious and do something unusual. Break out of what is an addiction. It's really a narrow place that a person is in. Break out of that to freedom and, and try new things. Um, call someone that you know might be lonely, especially elderly people at this time. They would love to hear from you. Um, there, there's, there's so many things that you could do. Something creative that's been on your bucket list for years. Try it out. Um, just spend a little time doing it and see if you still feel hungry an hour later. Or do, or do you notice that by bringing this new joy into your life, it's a different, you fill that hunger, which was never really a physical hunger. It was a spiritual kind of hunger. And this way you filled your soul. So it's, so it can shine again. Yes. <laughs> amazing, amazing advice. Brilliant. Really good. Um, I mean, they all resonate, but every week, Friday mornings, I, I set aside time to ring my Nana and speak with her. Oh. And she always like hello who's this and then we get chatting and he's like ah oh, alex so nice to hear from you and you know she's so happy and it, i always come away from this conversation just feeling so um what's the word i know content should we say yes, yes. Content, happy he's like oh that was nice you know i feel like i've done something good we have you know it's nice to talk to her it's nice to support her she's a bit um she's by herself during these during covid so um yeah the, the thought then never the thought of food never arises during that conversation <laughs> i'm so focused on just chatting with her and you know making sure she's all right and supporting her that yeah that's such a great point exactly exactly you know I, there was somebody on facebook he was putting up a message saying um i've just gained so much weight during pandemic i just keep eating and eating so like i i put in a, a message back and i said well right now while people are reaching out to you and you're reaching out to other people here on Facebook, do you feel like overeating? And he said, no. I said, that's because you're connecting with other people right now. This is what you need to do. You need to fill your soul in other ways. You, you don't need more of that food. You need other ways to be more connected. And I think you, you, you can prove it to people right in that moment because he, he wasn't feeling like, eating overeating right then when he was connecting and all these people were sending advice to him and he was interacting even though it was virtual he was online there was nobody with him he still didn't feel lonely because there was connection happening yes 
Amazing. Yeah. I mean, technology these days has given us the ability to, I mean, we're chatting across thousands of miles across the, uh, how many in the UK or in the US and um, yeah, the ability to message and connect with people we don't know is, is, is amazing right now and, and needed to be fair in, during yeah. the COVID period. So yeah, that's, that's a really, that's an amazing story. And I know, a great I, point. I, I've been really home so much of this pandemic, but I started reading my children's books to children all around the world. I feel more connected than ever. You know, I feel like this real universal connection now. That's what it does. The, the possibilities are endless. They really are. Absolutely. That's, that's so cool. Reading your, your <laughs> books across the world. That's amazing. Yeah. Bracca, this has been a real pleasure talking with you. Um, yes, thank you. Like... It's a pleasure for me to meet with you and connect with you this way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, would you like to share with the audience how they can find you and find out more about what you're up to? Oh, all of my books are on my Amazon author page. So um, my name is B-R-A-C-H-A, Bracca Getz, G O. E T Z G G O E T Z right Bracca Getz, and if you look up Amazon, you'll just find me with all my books in one spot. Yeah. Awesome, Bracca Getz, although it's spelt go it. <laughs> <laughs> Bracca, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much. Continued joy. I love what you're doing.